Hi everybody, it's Sharon here. It's been a while since I posted a video, so today I um, saw some Baltimore Orioles in my yard and I thought, you know what, I'm, gonna, I'm going to paint some Baltimore Orioles. So um, I didn't have a chance to take a photo of it myself, so I'm using a photo from the internet and I'm just changing it up a little bit, added a tree in the background. I've already done um, most of the drawing so I'm going to go ahead and start painting with my watercolors. Most of the watercolors I'm using here today are Daniel Smith watercolors, with the exception of a couple that may be some Van Gogh from the local store. And actually, I think these Van Gogh watercolors are supposed to be student grade, but they're, they're pretty nice. Um, I'm impressed with, with the ability... Uh, or with the type of color that they lay. They're, they're just pretty amazing. So anyhow, I'm just mixing up some black here. I like to use my indigo blue um, for part of that. And I can't remember where my indigo blue is, so I need my chart here. My indigo is the second row right here. Okay. It gives a nice blue-black appearance, which I like. Um, this is looking like it's laying pretty blue, but I because I used some um, Payne's gray in with it as well. But I'm just going to go ahead and lay the color using an Arches mop brush here, size three. Um, yeah, size three Arches. They call it the Petit Gris Pure. Whatever. I think it came from uh, China, actually, even though they're made in France. Um, whoever sent it to me <laughs> packed it in mothballs or something. The, the, it took a long time to get rid of that scent, which is nauseating to me. Um, I used dish soap and scrubbed the handle with dish soap. I soaked it, soaked the wood. I used, um, what is that, orange cleaner that auto mechanics use on their hands to get grease off. Um, I kept that away from the bristles, of course, but that worked the best. Oh, shoot, I just made a mistake, too. And I don't have any towels out. Duh. Let's see if I can get that. That's going to stain because it's indigo. So, oh, well, no big thing. But anyway, I do like this brush. It holds a lot of color, um, which is kind of nice. But um, it can be a little more difficult to work with because it's a mop brush. It has a softer, very soft bristles, as you can see here. They're real, they're real movable. They come to a fine point, and it holds its point well, which is why I like these brushes. But I tend to do better with a stiffer brush because I get a little wild with my paint staying in the lines. <laughs> um, so what I would use more often, these, these synthetic Simply Simmons brushes are really nice for watercolor. Of course, they don't hold as much liquid, but also um, some brushes that I really love are my Sterling Edwards set brushes. He comes with a lot of mop brushes, um, hake brushes, and tons of rounds. I got the full set. Now this one has a much stiffer point on it, and it still holds quite a bit of liquid, but you can see how, how it reacts. Um, I can get right in there, and it holds, holds really well. So um, this area is going to be orange. And then this is black here. I went a little too high with my um, with my uh, little feathers here because this area needs to be orange. I'm just going to bring it up a little bit higher. And then this is black all through here. That should cover it. And it's a little bluer because I just mixed more color. Let me get some burnt sienna in there and that'll really black it down. There we go. Oh yeah, see how much blacker that is now? I should really wait for this to dry 
before going over it again but um, it was almost dry so I think we'll be okay especially since it's black but Baltimore Orioles have the coolest sounding voices they're so beautiful when they sing if you're in an area that doesn't have Baltimore Orioles um, oh my gosh you gotta come to Michigan sometime probably have a lot in Baltimore I'm sure if that's where they got their name from but they're bright orange, a yellowy orange. Some of the one that I saw yesterday was more yellow orange. And I'm not sure if that's the female. I have to kind of check into that and see. But um, I'm going to go ahead and mix up some orange here. Very bright, very vibrant. And I'm going to add a little bit of cadmium red into the orange to really deepen the color. And then I'm going to add some gamboge mixed on the side, which is an orangier. Oops, did I use gamboge? Yeah. It's orangier than a cadmium yellow. And I believe gamboge is more transparent as well. So this area right here, is that dry? Yeah. This one is, this area right here is more of a yellow orange. So we will put that in there. And then I'm just going to add a little dot of the orange into it to darken some areas here. There we go. And then the tail down here at the bottom has more yellow. The under feathers are very yellow on the tail. And when they spread the tail, it gets very yellow with that black stripe down the center. Um, and right here, it's more yellow. Then up, up near the chest, of course, it gets deeper. Most birds, if they have a bright color, it's deeper at the chest. This orange, I'm not real happy with that color. So I'm going to add a little more yellow to it. Looks like it's bleeding in anyway from the other area. So, and I'll bring this down. And then, as I bring it down, I've got to mix these oranges together with the yellows. Let me get a my mop brush here, and I'm going to wet the whole thing, which will be much easier for blending the color. It's a little too much water, but I want to be able to blend it. Okay, I'm going to add some of this orange in and then some of the yellow in. The yellow comes back down under here. Whoops, there's a hair on there. A couple of them. I don't know where those came from. My mop brush leaked or what? Or molted. <laughs> okay, more yellow. That's more like how it is. I'll show you the photo I'm working from here. This is the photo. I hope you can see it. The brightness is bright enough here. Let me, I've got a window right behind me and it's probably there. That might show it better. So you can see here how it's deep orange and then it kind of gets a little yellower and then oranger and then yellower. So that's what I'm working on. And then the part of the wing up here is more yellow. Um... And I think I'm going to go back in here and remove some of that orange to make it yellower. There we go. And there should be a little more yellow up here. Let's see if I can remove some of that orange. There we go. Put a little of the yellow in. Now their beaks, 
are actually a bluish color, but um, before I get to that, I'm going to work on, actually I will work on the beak here. Oops, I bled a little bit down here too. Darn it, I wonder if I can get rid of that. I may have made that worse, but I can fix it later with background information, so to speak. And the legs are kind of a gray-blue also, so I'm going to add some Payne's Gray into my black mixture, which was mostly blue, indigo blue, and I'm watering it down. Um, and I'm going to go into the beak here and just... Actually, I want to wet that beak down too, because the beak needs to have a bit of striping in it, but also... A little bit of blue, especially along here. Okay, it got a little too dark there, so I'm going to bring some of this back. There, I want it very muted. So I'm going to do that again. I think I'm going to use a little ultramarine, which granulates. And I'm just going to put that in here. And then I'm going to lift it out so that I can remove some of this blue. And just leave it faintly in there. There, that's more like it. Then when it dries, I will go in and I'll add the stripe along the beak. And the same for the legs. But before I get to the legs, their little thigh areas are yellowish orange. So I'm going to add that in there. It's more yellow. Okay. Now I'm going to go back up here. I've got to kind of bounce around. Um, if you're familiar with watercolor, you know that the color will bleed into other colors. So you've got to make sure one area is dry. Now I don't think this area was dry enough here. You see I'm getting some blooming and I don't want that effect here. So I'm just going to kind of wet the whole area so that it kind of dissipates a little bit. And going back into that, mixing up a little more of the black with indigo blue and burnt sienna. And what I could have done here is added some masking for the white areas, but I'm just going to try and be careful here and leave areas of striping that are white. You need a small brush with a fine, fine point on it, like this one. See how fine the point is on that. This is a size 4 of Sterling Edwards brand. Going back over that because that was not thick enough. As it gets towards the front, the striping gets a little bit wider. So I'm just going to do that. And that's all right, I guess. And then at the bottom area, the striping is very thin. Very, very thin. So I may just come back in, in with a, um, and cheat a little bit, since this is in my sketchbook. 
Um, I may just do black and then um, come back with a white pen later and add the white striping back in. I'll show you here. It's so fine. This area right down here is the area that I think would be easier to come in with a white, a white, um, what is that, the Uni Signo white brush. I'll show you when we get there. But I think that's what I'm going to do, except for maybe a small area. Ooh, this really got black. I think I'll go back in with this and repaint it again, too, to make the black a little bit deeper. Oops, I lost my photo. There we go. Oops. And this comes right up to here. So quiet. Sorry, I should be talking more. Hope everybody's been doing well these last couple weeks that I didn't post videos. Um, I was under the weather. I um, had a little relapse with my autoimmune disease and it causes a lot of pain. So I was taking some time off and I really need to be working on a um, commission painting that um, I'm planning on doing on camera. I'll show you my practice piece. Um, it's a friend of mine who has a cat, and I was just practicing with this. Um, this is her cat, and this is a mess. I was just playing around to get ideas, but I need to do a commission on that, so that's what I will be doing next, and at first I was going to do it in pastel, and then I thought, no, I think I'm going to do it in watercolor, and maybe watercolor pencil, and maybe some Prismacolor, or maybe some pastel. I haven't really decided, um, but since I was not feeling well, I didn't want to push it, because that's when I make mistakes. So, luckily she's very understanding and is willing to wait for this. So I'm going to get it to her very soon. These stripes, I'm not liking the way they turned out because they look too even. So I think what I'm going to do here is um, fix them with pen as well. Cheat a little bit, if you call it cheating. Okay, now back to the legs. I hope I'm in frame here. Yeah, I'm in frame. I can't see my camera because... I have my phone, which I'm using, and it's taped to my iPad tripod, so I can't see the screen. So just forgive me there for that, but it looks like we're okay from what I can see. Um, right now I'm just mixing a little bit of the blue for the beak. I want to go back in and um, put the stripe in here which comes along right on top of the mouth, on the top side of the beak, but not in the crack of, you know, between the, between the beak. And I see now that I made this beak incorrectly. This beak should go up, kind of concave. You can see here, this, I should have drawn it this way. Instead, I curved it convex instead of concave. So it's incorrect, but just a sketchbook. So live and learn, right? So now I'm going to do the legs here and they're kind of a gray blue. The claw is the same, the nail. He's perched up on an orange which is very common. They eat oranges. Oops, I hustled on that and I shouldn't have. Put some more blue in here. 
to make this a little bluer. Got one leg wider than the other two. That's what I get for hurrying. Okay. So now I can work on this orange. I'm just gonna dry the little foot though so that I don't have a problem with that. I don't usually like to dry my watercolor because it makes my page all warped. So now my orange has a lot of yellow in it also. So I'm gonna mix these two together, my orange and my yellow. Get that set. And then I'm gonna take my wash brush, my mop. This is my synthetic mop by Princeton Neptune. It is a number six, size six. And um, these brushes are pretty awesome. I was really impressed by what I could paint with this because it comes to such a fine point and it holds so much liquid, I can actually get into small areas. I probably could have done his feet with this brush even, but I'm using this other one, so. Now this orange is darker on the bottom from shadowing. So I'm gonna go in with the darker orange in the bottom. And then I'm gonna lift it up with new gamboge. There's more darkness on the back here. Whoops, I went outside my line again, darn it. I'm trying to hurry. There, I think that's a little better. This area right near here needs to be darker, but it's a little too dark. Oof, too dark. some of that orange up because it's a little darker than I want it to be here and a little too heavy on the paint there we go okay and then I'm going to mix a very light Yep, color for maybe some yellow ochre and a very pale color for the meat inside the orange. Got my yellow in there because it's bleeding, which I expected it to do. A little but I didn't want that much so that's good okay so now let's work on the see a little area here I need to fix here on this bird there we go and we'll do the tree now the tree I'm going to be using gray and brown together Payne's gray with a little bit of sepia, maybe. I think this is sepia. Let me just make sure. Yes. For me, they I like the color that it gives on my branches when I mix the two together. So I'd like a little more brown, though, on this one. There we go. I need to go to a bigger brush, too flat here. Let's see how my flat will work. Whoops, I splashed water all the way across my page. Wow. Let's 
need to mix some more color. Periscope's going off. That's a little too dark. There we go. Let's water that down a little bit. I dragged this over onto the other page because I've got a spot of paint over there. So I'll probably just write on that page. This sketchbook isn't anything sketchbook. I don't have a theme on it. In fact, some of the sketches in it are so old, they're embarrassing, I can't even show people. So this one will probably stay hidden, except for what you see. Oops. i got to turn this around because I'm going to get my hand in my paint. So... don't usually use a flat brush for painting unless I'm doing something like shingles on a roof or something like that or the side part of a tree 